Okay guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ari and hopefully you'll stick around for a quick video. Okay guys, so if you haven't gotten from the title, this is a bit of I guess you could say kind of a confessional type of video to say, to explain some things that have been going on. Um, when I do the videos, and if you've heard me speak in public as well, I try to be very open with everything, with every aspect of what's going on with my life. Um, I want people to truly understand the perspective of at least one trans person, and obviously I can't speak for all trans people, and I don't pretend to. But I think it's important for people to get that perspective. However, there has been something that was unintentionally misleading in my videos or if you've heard me speak in public. And I say unintentionally misleading because what I said I believed to be and appeared to be the truth. But in fact, it wasn't. And a big part of that is I've talked about how lucky and blessed I've been, which I have been, in regards to family. And while that certainly remains true, it hasn't been nearly as positive as I would have thought it was. You see, it's been almost four years since I transitioned and probably around three or so since I informed my family. Because I live away from people and I'm out here where I don't have any family for more than 10 hours away with the exception of just me and my husband and friends that we have in the area, um, it was easy for me to um, kind of explore and figure out what I was going to do without informing people up front until I got more comfortable. So, going back a little bit. And if you see me with my phone, it's because I have some screenshots that I'll be referencing too. But anyway, going back, over the past year, I got involved with our local Democratic Party. And what I was doing was um, doing speeches at live events where we, you know, still tried to maintain our social distancing. We wore our mask, etc. But we wanted to get out the word. We wanted to encourage voter turnout. And we wanted to hear um, and present voices from different aspects within the party or within the electorate. So, I came there to try to represent the trans community, the LGBT community as best I could. And there were other LGBTQ speakers. Um, we had people who came from a more conservative background, former Republicans that spoke. Um, we wanted to try to present that. And in the process of that, I did talk about family, and I talked about how blessed and how lucky I was in that regard. Well, around election time, it was, it came to my attention that a particular relative just all of a sudden started posting pro-Trump, anti-Democrat, conspiracy theory style videos. And this came right after, like within days after the election. Um, and I chose to say nothing to them. I didn't, you know, do any little mean face emojis on the status. I didn't do anything. I left it alone. But I did um, contact the spouse of that person, who is my actual blood relation, and told them, you know, I understand that your spouse is, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious which way they're going. I hope that's not the case for you, considering how transphobic the um, Trump administration has been, and you have a trans relative that you claim to love and respect. That relative responded back saying that they didn't vote for either one of them, because I don't like Biden and I don't like Trump. So I only voted for local candidates. And that was it. I got no, no response after that. 
no text messages after that, and this was a person who I was in very, very regular contact with. So immediately after that conversation with the spouse, suddenly I was not only deleted as a Facebook friend of the other person, um, but I was blocked. Well, me being me, I have a tendency to get somewhat aggressive in those situations because I've, I've dealt with a lot of being walked over in my lifetime and now as a nearly 40 year old woman I'm not prepared to let people continue to walk over me. I'm done with that stage of my life. So I speak up. You might like it, you might hate it, but I'm going to speak up. So I posted a message talking, addressed to Dear Trump Supporting Family and Friends, to where I talked about some of these things that were of concern to me with those people who claim to support us, but then turn around and vote for someone who attacks us. In the process of all this, another relative messaged me. And part of this is this relative... I felt like basically tried to guilt trip me because they showed up at my wedding. As if that meant that somehow I'm supposed to give you a free pass when showing up to your close relative's wedding seems like it's kind of the least that a person could expect out of their family. I mean, most people, it's a given that your close family members are going to be at your wedding. I mean, that's not something that you need to get down on hands and knees and kiss their feet, thanking them for doing. But regardless, the conversation continued. I attempted to kind of smooth things as best I could by, you know, making it very clear that I do absolutely love my family, including those Trump-supporting family members. And I mean that. I don't hate them. I absolutely um, adore these people. They are my family. They always will be. But that doesn't mean I have to accept toxic, bigoted positions. So in the process, of course, this other relative who commented brought up things like abortion, which I pointed out the fact that the abortion numbers without Roe v. Wade being overturned and all of this have consistently went down throughout all presidencies since that time. Not just Republican, but Democrat as well. And that there were legitimate ways to decrease the need for abortion through things like, you know, universal health care, which the Republicans reject. Um, you know, better prenatal care, uh, free prenatal care. Um, income inequality, uh, raising the minimum wage to a living wage so that people don't feel they have to make that choice. These are real world solutions that you can do that reduce the need. Of course, none of those matter because the pro-life party are also completely and totally opposed to all of these real world solutions. They just want to yell and scream about it. So, in the process of all this, I posted several things from, uh, there, there's a page, if you look it up, and I think it's, um, it, it's one of the um, civil rights organizations that deal with LGBT rights. For the life of me, I can't remember. But if you search the word, uh, the phrase, the discrimination administration, you'll find a list of all the anti-LGBT and specifically all the anti-trans, and it may be the Transgender Center for Equality, I can't remember who does it, um, that ev but it'll list everything that the Trump administration has done attacking LGBT people and specifically trans people. It's been an invaluable resource because they keep a, um, an in-time account of that. They're always adding to it as the Trump administration is adding to their great list of bigotry. So I attempted to pull facts from that website that are verifiable policy positions of the current administration and respond to that relative who had commented. 
talking about the things that they had done against trans people specifically. And the response that I got back, which I don't know if I uh, did a screenshot of it. Uh, here we go. Quote, you chose that path. People have the right to change their sex, be gay or lesbian. Everyone has choices, but there are always consequences for our decisions. So to boil that down for you, basically what was being said there is that, yes, of course trans people get poor treatment from this administration, but it's our own fault because we choose to be this way. Now, if you knew me growing up, Saying that I chose to be this, you would understand what an ignorant comment that is. I have never, ever been butch. I was never the manly man. I never, I never did a very good job, no matter how hard I tried, of trying to cover up. I was the little boy, according to what people saw, who loved my Barbie dolls, who, um, and She-Ra. She-Ra was my hero. Look her up if you don't know who she is. Um, but I, I would wear my, I would wear long t-shirts and put on my grandmother's heels and play around. Um, you know, I, I had my, when I was younger, very young, I had that shaggy hair and I cried when I had it cut off saying I'm not pretty anymore. So to try to say that it was a choice, A, is an ignorant thing to say. If you know me, you know that it wasn't a choice. It's kind of like the conversation that my father and I have had, where he said that, you know, no, he couldn't say that he knew I was trans before I was, but once he knew that I was trans, it was very easy to look back on several things throughout my life and be like, that's where I should have figured it out. So, yes, hindsight is twenty twenty. But looking back, it's very easy to tell that that's, you know, the case. So, anyway, after these comments and me being very blunt about the choice argument, this relative went on their own Facebook page. They posted a lot of religious gobbledygook. Um, I won't accept water, a watered-down version of of the Bible or live by others twisting of the word to suit their lifestyle. Jesus doesn't cause confusion. That is a trick of the devil. Um, so much evil in this world today and it's accepted as good or normal behavior. So, no, I wasn't mentioned specifically by name in that. But the timing made it very clear, and anyone who had been watching would know, that this was a response to me. Um, this was a response saying that I was the one that was confused or tricked by the devil uh, because of who I am. Um, that was a way of showing more than just political difference, and it's not just about political difference. And I would note, too, that that horrible, horrible transphobic bigoted post, got a like from the original relative that I had spoken to, the spouse, um, gave it a heart emoji, and this is someone that I was very close to, which was very, very hurtful. Um, but anyway, it made it very clear that the basis of all this was in transphobia. Yes, they were people were willing to come up for the wedding, and I appreciate that, but I really shouldn't have to, like, specifically appreciate that because that's the bare basics of what people do. Um, that's civilized, that's family relationships. I mean, I, you know, but anyway, um, it was clear it was about transphobia. I made a choice in their view and because I had made this choice, I had to live with the consequences and to them, the consequences aside from apparently believing that the eternal consequences are hellfire and brimstone, um, also included me being treated like shit by the American political system and people like me because that was the consequences for our choice. And um, 
we have went through Thanksgiving, no message, no Happy Thanksgiving, Christmas, no Merry Christmas, no nothing, and we're approaching what'll be my birthday, and I don't expect to hear anything from them then either, and um, if that's the case, so be it. It threw me because it took three years for the transphobia to rear its head. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. I have people, um, I'm not totally lost of family. I have people, and you know who you are, if you are watching, who have been um, very supportive of me, continue to be... Um, love and accept me for who I am, but the truth is that I also have a lot of people who I thought were better people than this, that it turns out aren't. Um, and that's life. Unfortunately, that's a reality for a lot of LGBTQ people. Usually we find out immediately. Usually it starts with a rejection and then maybe people will slowly ease into acceptance. In my case, it seems to have went the opposite way. Um, I got fake, phony, pseudo-acceptance until the reality came out. And that's that they believe this is all a choice and I'm deserving of any hardship uh, because of who I am. Uh, I continue to love them, which is kind of funny because I'm loving them and, frankly, showing more Christ than they are in the way they're responding to this. But it's all about this warrior syndrome that evangelical Christianity has out where attacking people somehow makes you the martyr. And then you're suddenly feeling like you're amazingly closer to God because you have treated people badly for something they have no control over. Well, being trans, being gay, being lesbian, being bi, those are not choices. Religion and religious interpretation, that's a choice. That's a decision you make. But I'm not going to go into the religiosity of all of this because it's about family and I'm running long anyway. The point is, is listen, I can't experience everything that every one of you do. And this is not a sob story, poor Ari, because I'm fine. I'll be just fine. I have a supportive husband. I still have some supportive relatives. So guys, for some odd reason, my video suddenly shut off in the middle of recording. And I didn't notice this until after I was in the process of editing. So just to finish up and end it out, um, the whole point of the video was I wanted to let you guys know we all go through these problems. We all have to deal with family disappointments, especially in the LGBTQ community. Oftentimes, we do have to make our own family hold close to those who are loyal to you, who respect and appreciate and love you, and let go of the past. Maybe those people will walk back into your life. Maybe they will make amends, and maybe they won't. But either way, you'll move on with your life. You'll create the life that you've always wanted, and they'll be the ones that's missed out on all the great things that you'll be able to do from the ordinary to the fantastic. So don't let it get in your way. My quote from Kesha, don't let the bastards get you down. Don't let anyone, including your own family, get you down. If you're being true to who you are and you feel like no one appreciates you, know that while I may not know you, being who you are, the bravery that that takes to stand up and say, this is me, we, myself, and my husband, we are proud of you for taking that step. We may not be there to be family, but you are not alone. There are people who support you, and no matter what comes up against you, continue to fight, continue to be yourself. Don't let your circumstances change who you are. You have the opportunity to change your circumstances. Lots of love, and until the next video, bye-bye.